While YouTube has hundreds of thousands of videos on virtually every topic, every subject area you can think of, and you can filter by grade level, if you find a video perhaps on YouTube that you would like to use, that you want your students to watch, but you want to make sure they're watching it, you can incorporate YouTube videos into Edpuzzle as well. So what I'm going to do is I have YouTube open in another window in my browser. And let's say, for instance, this video I want to use, and I'm going to embed some questions in it, which I can't do on YouTube, so I'm going to bring it over to Edpuzzle. So I found the video that I want, and I'm going to come up to the address bar of my web browser, and I'm going to copy the website address, which is hidden in my video, but it's right at the top of my YouTube screen. And I'm going to highlight it, and then I'm going to right-click on the URL or the website for this video, and I'm going to click Copy. Now I'm going to pop over back over to Edpuzzle, and in this search box here, I'm going to right-click and paste, and then I'm going to click Search. So if the video is not under any kind of restriction in terms of copyright or privacy, the video should pop up automatically. So now that the video is here, I could press play here and preview it if I hadn't previewed it already on YouTube. But if I've already previewed it, I have now three editing options that I can do with this video. So the first one that it will land on is cut. And cut, what this allows you to do is to chop off or crop the beginnings and or the ends of the video if you find that not all of the video is necessary or you want to make the video a little bit shorter. You cannot cut out aspects of the video in the middle of it. You would need to have a video editing program to do that. But you could, by dragging this little black bar, you could drag this video to where you want it to start. And once you let go and you drag this back over, you will see where this video is now going to start if I wanted to. And you can do the same thing over here at the end. And those changes are saved automatically. I wouldn't need to do anything. And if I didn't want um, the last action that I did, I could hit undo. And this will return this one back. Or I could press reset, and it will bring this video back to full. So now I'm going to jump over to voiceover. Now, voiceover is not an option you can use on YouTube videos right now due to their terms of service. However, if you were to upload your own video that you took with your own camera or phone, you would be able to use this feature because the video belongs to you. So we're going to skip that one for now, and we're going to come over to the third editing option, which is questions, which is kind of the, the meat and potatoes of using Edpuzzle. So I have a video that I want the students to watch, but I want them to answer certain questions throughout the video to check for understanding, to make sure that they're watching the entire context of the video. So to do that, I'm going to hit play on this video. And when this video starts and I get a little black dot, I'm going to be able to scrub this video. Let's press play again, just to make sure it starts. And as your video begins to play, You'll see this little black dot over here, which will indicate where you are in the video. So let's say after they teach about the first there, I want to write a question. So I'm going to scrub through this video because I know where there is. And maybe I want to now include a question about the use of the first there that was taught. So I have three different options over here. I have a multiple choice. And for multiple choice, you can pre-select what the correct choice is. So as the students move through the video, they'll be graded automatically, and you'll know who got what right, who got what wrong. So if it's a multiple choice question, you can just type in, again, whatever your question is, and then you can type in your answer choices. So let's say I have maybe put a sentence in the question box indicating, and they need to tell me which of these theirs is appropriate for the sentence. And I could add another option over here. And you'll see as you type in each of the text boxes provided, you have some features up here, um, some formatting features. So if this was a math class and you needed to include some math symbols, you have that. Or if you are teaching younger grades in particular, if you wanted to add an image, um, you could add an image that you would have to sit, have saved on your computer. And you can use those to represent the answer. And you also have different formulas so that you can put equations. 
So let's say this is the correct choice and I'm going to click the green check next to the option that is correct so that this is graded automatically and then I'm going to click save. So now I have my first indicator of where this video is going to stop for my students before they can move on and they will have to answer this question before they can move on and this is what will look like on their screen. So now as I scrub through this video and I want to insert a, another type of question, I can scrub through this or you could just hit play and when you get to the point where you want to add a question, you can just hit the pause button. So now what I'm going to do, I moved this question by accident, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another question. So I'm going to pause this and now I want to maybe add a question right here. So this was my first question. Okay, so let's go over to open-ended. So if you wanted to add an open-ended question such as um, provide a sample sentence where you would use the word there. And then the students would have to create their own sentence and submit it. So I can hit save. If you did want to allow the students to um, put an audio response as opposed to having to type it, you can add this as well. And if you're happy with your question, you can hit save. So you can see here, this will show up and then the student would provide a text box to answer. So you can continue doing this throughout the video just by hitting play or using this tool over here to scrub through the video and get to another point where you want to add another question and you can hit, then hit pause and then select your question type. So all of my changes so far you can see in the upper right have been saved automatically so I don't need to save anything. And if I'm finished working on this for now, I could click finish and I can always edit things. If you are still in the video and want to edit any of your questions, you can just click on these little question indicators underneath your timeline of your, your YouTube video and then you would be able to edit this by clicking this edit button or trashing it all together if you wanted to get rid of that question. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish and now I can see a video preview of this video. And if I went back to the home page of Edpuzzle and I clicked on, sorry, my content, you can see this video is here. So if I needed to go back to it because I hadn't finished editing it, next time I log into Edpuzzle, I can go to my content, click on my video. I have options up here if I need to edit it or preview it, I can do so there. I'm going to click edit and then I can go back over to questions and I can continue adding questions. So this was just an overview of how to make your videos from YouTube interactive using the Edpuzzle question features.